Hello, today my presentation is on what have I learned from Tabor X Plus. Here are my disclosures. But well, we now know that Tabor volume has exceeded all server volume as early as mid-2018. So we might see more Tabor failure in the future over surgical aortic valve replacement. And you can see that in the TBT registry that the valve in our Tabor volume is now steadily increasing to over 500 cases probably in 2022. At the same time, we know that people getting tower are getting younger with median age at 75 and low risk. So given their longer life expectancy, the valve will likely fail in their lifetime. You can see that the ACC, AHA guidelines and EX guidelines respectively have that tower is now indicated in patients 65 or older in the US and 75 or older in Europe. And so why study tower explain? It's not just what I mentioned before, the TAVR is now the default and preferred treatment in all surgical risk patients. And TAVR failure, that you can, if you cannot do a redo TAVR, will likely require surgical explant. But very little is known about the devices that are getting explanted, failure mechanisms, and how people do after surgery. And obviously, the impact of THB type on outcomes of TAVR explant is also unclear. Why Tavra explant is not the same as first time Sabre or even redo Sabre is the following. With Sabre, remember, we remove all the aortic valve leaflets and we got the bulk, the annular, and LVOT calcium. So there's clean tissue plane to implant a surgical valve. And even with redo Sabre, you can still identify a plane between the surgical valve and the annulus, and there's no other structure that you'll injure or deprive to remove it unless it's endocarditis. And the LBOT, mitral valve, and the ascending aorta are typically not involved. With TAVR explant, there are three factors that impact on surgical complexity. There's the native leaflets that are stuck to the valve that are harder to extricate. The device itself may be stuck to the annulus, LBOT, or even the aorta. So harder to define the tissue plane to separate from the native anatomy. As a result of that, you can have a higher risk of cardiac injury and more extensive surgery or repair needed. And this happens especially when the explant is long, takes longer uh, after the tower valve has been in place for a longer time. The sub-expanding valve, as you know, extended the ascending aorta, so there's a high autonomy needed. You need to cannulate the aorta more distally or cross climb as well, so making the procedure potentially more complex. And finally, when you implant the valve deep, you can impinge on the membrane septum, and when you explant it, you can cause a BSD or injuring the mitral valve, leading mitral replacement, so it's no longer an isolated aortic valve replacement. Here's some examples of pictures looking at tower explants. So my colleagues with uh, Shinichi Fukuhara in Michigan, looking at the damages of the adjacent structures. You can see that with the tower explant here with the core valve, you can see the ascending aorta portion is already uh, encroached uh, with the native uh, tissue and, and healing over the top of that. And here's some examples of the injury that can occur, aortic root, membrane septum, anterior mitral leaflet, and even the aorta needing more extensive surgery. In the STS database, you can see that the median time to explain is only two and a half months. However, operative mortality is quite high, it's over 17%, with PBO and structural valve degeneration being the predominant mechanisms. And the observed to expected ratio of time explant is worse than the initial salver, despite being a high surgical risk patient. And this is the Medicare database looking at the same uh, information. You can see that again, the third modality is 13% with one year mortality almost 23%, despite a low incidence of surgical explant. We recently published a number of papers now uh, talking uh, about tower explant. And the first one being the surgical explantation of the tower failure with the explant tower registry that was published in Jack Intervention uh, a couple of years ago. And we actually created this registry with the go to understand better the mechanism of tower failure, what, how the indication of explant are, what the procedures are, and outcomes. And you can see that here, 263 patients, either balloon or self-expanding valve across 42 centers around the world with uh, tower explant in the same hospital admission being excluded. And you can see that it's roughly 50-50 split. And you can see that these are the sites that put the participated. And you can see that the mean age is only 72 years. Uh, the mean SDS score is only 4.8%, actually 28% for low risk patients. And 90% of patients were deemed unfavorable for redo tower, and that's why they got explant. And the median time to explant is about one year. And you can see the mechanism is predominantly endocarditis, 
However, structural deterioration and parabolic were also under mechanisms and a small percentage were due to PPM. However, almost half the patient had to go undergo urgent emergent surgery. You can see some of the data here in terms of the valve choices that were removed and also the mechanical or tissue valve that are actually implanted here. Most of them, of course, are tissue valve given the patient demographics. Root replacement, however, only 14.4%, but almost 50% of patients require concomitant cardiac procedures. Despite the procedure mortality being low, in hospital fatalities of over 10%, we can see some of the complications here. However, high stroke rate as well in 30 days and also at one year with high mortality. So this was the summary of the paper uh, published in Jack Intervention, as I mentioned before. And so you can see that with expand time of registry showing us that, uh, that you know, with pretty sobering data and of course, better experience with surgical explant will also improve the outcomes. And we've turned looking into that uh, with as a working group. Next, I want to talk about a sub-study looking at aortic valve versus root surgery that was presented uh, previously. And you can see this is a study summary that despite that the root replacement have potentially uh, more uh, self-expanding valve and more uh, elective surgery, the outcomes were essentially similar to aortic valve replacement alone. So indicating that root replacement is not a more complex or risky procedure in expert hands. And you can see that how even looking at valve type, but root expandable versus self-expanding in terms of the mechanism of failure and the outcomes, you can see that here, uh, there have been no difference in stroke and mortality in terms of self-expanding versus root expandable. However, there is more root replacement with self-expanding valves. And then I want to bring to your attention of explanal redo type registry. Now, this is a registry that all these sites internationally participated that underwent ex tower explant and also redo tower on a group of patients. Because what we want to look at is, if you have a pool of patients, how many of them can do redo tower and how many of them can we do tower explant and what were the outcomes of each group? And so what we looked at, you can see here is that over 500 patients uh, in terms of having either treatment procedures. And we actually, in this case, exclude the patients on endocarditis because obviously they're not gonna have redo tower. And so what we left were essentially about 170 patients in each group to compare. And how, despite that, we also look at the incidence of intervention and you can see it still remained low at 0.5%. You can see these are the sites who participated. And you can see that here, the redo tower patients were typically older and high risk during index tower. That makes sense because obviously you know, it's not a surgical candidate. Uh, they're not going to get tower x prime if the anatomy is not feasible for redo tower. And you can see the STS score uh, is also higher and also more patients uh, with higher surgical risk. You can wow. see the interesting here, Sapien 3 valve with predominantly a higher mechanism for tower x plant uh, versus Sapien XT and Sapien. That might be also because there's probably more Sapien 3 implanted since this approval because of the expansion of TAVR. But you can see that here with self-expanding valve is pretty much similar between the two groups of different uh, valve types. You can see that the mechanism of degeneration uh, leading to TAVR failure and TAVR explanation versus redo TAVR is also interesting. Notice that if you look at patient prosthesis mismatch, uh, that if you have that, you're really more likely to get TAVR explanation rather than redo TAVR because we do tower, unlike surgical valve, uh, you can't really fracture a tower valve, so you're not going to be able to make the orifice bigger. Uh, but however, you can see the structural degeneration is more common with redo tower, but no difference with PBL or thrombosis. The time of explant versus redo tower is also interesting. The redo tower group is likely to be later, and while the explant is to be earlier, obviously, if it's going to fail sooner, then no option, then they will likely get surgery rather than waiting it out for the patient to be sicker. Redo tower, you can see this is the breakdown mostly, of course, is the latest generation, balloon expandable and self-expanding valve. However, you can also see that the surgical data as well, because half the patients require concomitant uh, procedures, including most of them mitral valve surgery. If you look at the index tower or redo tower valve types, number one is number two, you can see that here, no difference in terms of the combination. If you start with balloon expandable, you need a balloon expandable, uh, self-expanding were likely equally likely implanted and same if the other way around. No coronary obstruction in this series of redo tower, 
and also uh, one only free conversion to surgery. You can see, however, TAVR x one does have higher in hospital mortality and longer length of stay uh, compared to Redu TAVR, which is obvious. Redu TAVR has more vascular complication. You can see the mortality and the stroke. You can see, again, pretty obvious. TAVR x one is an open heart surgery, so they could have higher mortality risk than Redu TAVR, which is pretty respectable. Uh, however, and however, there were really no difference in stroke in terms of either group. Tower explain also have a longer, a higher mortality than redo tower. But if you do a landmark analysis, it's really similar survival after you address the tower failure. And you can see that no difference between balloon expandable versus self expanding valve in terms of outcome. So this is the study summary that I mentioned before no difference in mortality after the landmark analysis. However, tower explain obviously would have a higher mortality rate. Then redo tower, and they will likely pull the explant sooner than later. But there are a number of study limitations on this uh, relative to the uh, study. You can see that here. And so, I think in conclusion, that this is the first registry that is really studying the two groups uh, side by side with the same centers. And you can see the conclusions here, as I mentioned before. So, I think in general, the study showed that tower explant was riskier. Uh, we don't know the long-term pro prognosis uh, in terms of similar to redo tower patients. The question is, is there selection bias? Really, we haven't seen the valve type in influencing the outcomes of either uh, study arm, and these patients might study hypothesis generating. So now if you cannot do a tower explant, you might be able to bail out by just exciting the leaflet during the open stenotomy and not take out the valve because you don't want to add damage to the aortic root. And you can actually use a hybrid approach and implant a balloon expandable valve in the stent frame of a self-expanding valve as shown in this case report. So in summary, the tower expand tower registry is the largest in-depth experience. And also the expand or redo tower registry is the largest in-depth experience of redo tower versus tower expand. Tower expand is definitely technically more complex than first time of redo tower with high expected mortality and stroke. But I think with experience, outcomes will improve. The need for tower explants should be discussed in young and low risk patients, especially when redo tower is unlikely uh, feasible due to anatomy, so that they can be better informed whether the first time aortic valve intervention should be tower versus sever. And I'd like to thank everyone uh, for their contribution to this registry. And thank you very much for your attention.